Some B-29s, not silver plate models, but painted B-29s, regular B-29s, got trouble over Japan and had to divert to Siberia. But when they diverted, Russia's not at war with Japan. They would allow the crews to come back to the U.S., but they kept the airplanes. And they took them apart, ribbon by ribbon. They built their own B-29, called the TU-4, called the Bull. They built about 400 of them. So this plane became the Soviet Union's first nuclear delivery capability. They then had sold or gave some to the Chinese. So it became China's first nuclear delivery capability. How crazy is that? Another point, remember that Japanese balloon bomb we saw? One of those came down in the state of well, so many of them probably did it. One of them came down near the Hannaford nuclear plant. They shut the power off the place for a while. Uh, the F-14 was featured in Top Gun. It was a B, or a B model, I believe. This is a D model. This plane came into the Navy, and only the Navy to flew, right about the end of the Vietnam War. Uh, and replaced the F-4 Phantom. What the Navy wanted was a long-range interceptor that we could launch, fly out two or three hours from the carrier, and track a number of targets, and hopefully knock them down. It carries three kinds of missiles. A sidewinder missile, short-range, heat-seeking, a sparrow missile, which is on the other side, sort of intermediate range, 20, 30 miles, and then this thing called a Phoenix missile. It carries six of these. It's a long-range missile. They say you can fire at a target 125 miles out and forget it. Whether it all worked, I, I don't know. But that was the theory. This is a huge airplane for a fighter. It's a two-place airplane. You even had a one in the nose, but then it's on the other side of where we stand. But the reason it's in the museum, folks, is because of this business right here. This is called a variable geometry wing. This wing can swing out like this. When you take off and land on a ship, you need more wing. Here's what it would look like on a catapult with a wing on. Once the pilot gets airborne, it gets the gear up and then gear up. You can sweep that wing back 68 degrees, and you've got a plane that looks like this. You've got a fighter that can fly over twice the speed of sound on and off the ship. Well, we built about 535 of these things. The Shah of Iran bought 79 of them. I believe the Iranians used them against the Iraqis in their war in the early 80s. These have all been taken out of service here in the U.S. and been replaced by something called an F-18 Hornet. Um, show you the museum doesn't always get everything right. They put this plane on display about a year ago. Maybe two years. And an F-14 pilot comes up and says, hey guys, this, one of these parts in this wheel structure right here is on backwards. I mean, that's a, that's a F-14. You gotta get that fixed. So, I don't know if it's been fixed yet, but they promised that the next time they had to move it, they would take care of it. It hasn't been moved from this site yet. Come this way. Any questions about the F-14? None of them are flying today. Okay. In late 99, Boeing and Lockheed are engaged in a competition for the Joint Strike Fighter, the X-35. This is a, a plane that has come up with three configurations. The A model, it's called the CTOL model, conventional takeoff and landing. You take off from an airstrip, you fly supersonically, you fly stealthy, you come back and land on that airstrip. You replace F-16s and A-10s in the current Air Force. The B model is the one that gets all of them. We have had attention to these. We would like to invite our visitors to a free paper area podcast. Build a simple paper aircraft and discover the rules to build the planes in control of the flight of your plane. The contest is limited to only 30 pilots, so please come further. This free hands-on demonstration will start in a few minutes.
five minutes behind the elevator on the lower level of the museum's aviation hangar. Thank you. The B model is called the Stowball model. Short takeoff, fly supersonically, fly stealthy, land vertically. The C model, well the, and that, that's being built for the Marine Corps predominantly, replace Harrier jets. Take off a Marine Corps carrier, fly your mission, come back to the carrier, land vertically. The Navy model is the C model, more wing, more control surface to get on off a carrier. That, that'll be the C model. The A model is in training down at Eggman. They're training Air Force pilots on Eggman Air Force Base to fly it. The B model is already operational in at least one Marine Corps squadron. The C model has still got a couple more years of test and evaluation before it gets to the Navy. And that'll be used to replace the F-18 Hornets. This plane here is the one that was used in that competition between the two companies. They flew it 25 times as conventional takeoff and landing. Then they put it back in the factory. And they put this hardware in it called a lift fan, which goes right in behind the cockpit. And they flew it a few times as a stowball model. Vertical landing. Come over here, you can see all the hardware. This is the turbojet that's in all three of them, supposedly. You can see the, the nozzle pointing down. For the B model, they add this drive shaft and this thing called the lift fan. They also have these thrusters for roll control, one over here and one here. Incredible technology. I've got a few photographs I can share with you here. Here's what the top of this plane looks like right, ugh, right there. Those two doors have been reconfigured so it's a single door, and you'll see that on another picture. But the lift fan sits here and it just blows air down. That's what it looks like in actual flight, coming in to land vertically on a carrier wasp. And you see it's a single door. They've changed the configuration of the door. They figured that out in their testing. And that's what it looks like coming off the deck of a Marine Corps carrier, no catapult. It just rolls down the, the deck and takes off. Now, I'm not a pilot, I'm not an engineer, and I look at this thing and I have to scratch my head. How do you get all of this hardware in that airframe? Now, granted, they, you can get it in there, but how do you have any space left over for your weapon systems, because all your weapons have to be carried internally if you're going to remain stealthy, and you have any room left over for a load of gas so you can fly this thing further to Baltimore and back. I don't, I don't know what the range on that B model is, but it's, it can't be too long. Maybe the gas is in the wings. Possibly. Possibly. But how much? Any questions on this?